Hello and welcome to Nature Source Care. My name is Dr. Fonda Goldman. I'm a naturopathic physician. And in today's talk, I was going to cover the medicinal benefits of black pepper or piper nigrum. And this is part of the kitchen pharmacy series that um, I'm developing. So. Uh, a note beforehand, the information presented here is for educational purposes only and should not be considered medical advice. For any symptoms that persist or worsen, please consult with a qualified medical professional. It is always best to determine the root cause of any disease and to develop a comprehensive treatment plan. And while botanical medicine or nutritional remedies can be very effective, they may not be appropriate for everyone or as a single therapy. Um, also keep in mind, the two most common side effects of any plant-based medicine are digestive upset and skin itching. So. Okay, so... Um, if you're interested in this kind of stuff or this kind of content, um, I'm posting. Uh, I'm I'm into playlists, so I usually slot my. Um, uh, sometimes I always slot my videos into uh, different playlists so that they're easy to find. So this kind of stuff is going to be in my botanical medicine playlist, my nutrition playlist, and also my kitchen pharmacy playlist. Um, also, uh, the information presented here is based on my book. It's called Drink to Your Health, Medicinal Teas, Juices, and Milks from Around the World. If you're ever interested, you can pick up a copy on Amazon. And the reason why I wrote the book, actually, is because um, in my training, and I've read, I don't know how many nutrition books, um, I didn't really find very many uh, nutrition books that were integrative uh, of different paradigms of medicine. So uh, this particular book I wrote is integrative of Ayurveda, which is traditional Indian medicine, naturopathic medicine, which is traditional uh, natural medicine. You can almost kind of think of it as folk medicine. And then uh, the Western modern paradigm of medicine. Um, also, as I mentioned with my playlist, actually each of my playlists is kind of a course in and of itself if you're interested in learning more about natural medicine. So uh, beyond this kind of a nutrition, botanical medicine type stuff. So I have a playlist on Ayurveda, traditional Indian medicine, marma therapy, which is essentially a acupressure, but from a traditional Indian medicine perspective, uh, rather than a traditional Chinese medicine perspective, yoga and meditation, homeopathy. Um, under that umbrella, there I also have a playlist on black, black flower remedies, um, nutrition playlist, um, a lot of uh, videos on nutrition, actually, because for us, um, most of the time we feel that, uh, you know, nutrition is the first medicine um, because it, you know, are directly impacting uh, the person, you know, potentially several times a day with uh, what they eat and how they eat. Uh, I have a botanical medicine playlist, a hydrotherapy playlist, which is a therapeutic use of water, a body care playlist, and also a cleansing playlist. And that cleansing playlist is not just about physical cleansing, but mental, emotional, and spiritual cleansing as well. So a lot of natural medicine to learn uh, if you're up for it. So there you go. As for black pepper, our main topic today, hypernigrum. So the part of the plant that's used is a fruit, actually. And the method that you can use to um, create, uh, you know, really extract uh, the medicinal qualities of black pepper, um, like if you're making a tea or something like that, is both the infusion method and decoction method. So if you're not familiar with those methods, you might look at my video, Different Methods for Making Medicinal Teas, to learn about the details of, of what those are and how to, how to do them. Because um, depending, usually on uh, the part of the plant that's used, one method may be better than another. Or than another. Um, and in this case, both infusion and decoction are used. So from an Ayurvedic perspective, uh, black pepper produces vata. If you're not familiar with vata, pitta, klapha, you can loosely translate these terms as vata is too much wind. So it's kind of like a cold, dry energy in the body and mind. Pitta is a hot, a fiery type energy. And then kapha is an earthy type energy, so like cold and wet type energy. So the energetics of um, was Ayurveda is predominantly an energetic type of medical paradigm. So the energetics of this type of food or plant is that black pepper is both pungent and bitter. It's a warming herb, and it's also a pungent after effect, meaning that it's kind of um, more of a cleansing herb rather than like a building herb. Yeah. Okay. So uh, it's important to keep in mind. So again, this is a warm herb, but luckily not as warm as others, um, as we'll see. Uh, 
Um, okay, so the nervous system, actually black pepper is a herb that help, can help reduce pain. Um, in the respiratory system, it can help with coughs, congestion, bronchitis, asthma, pneumonia. Now, some of these things like asthma, um, we typically see as uh, vata, and so uh, which is a cold, dry energy. So the heat of pepper can, you know, balance out asthma. Okay. Now, some of these things like coughs, um, usually because this is essentially a, I would say, a dry, warming herb. Um, usually a wet cough, uh, pepper would be, black pepper would be a little bit uh, better for, frankly. Um, so whenever there's congestion, like in the sinuses or the lungs, uh, I would think about black pepper. But that's the thing is that, you know, um, part of the reason, another reason why I wrote this book um, is because people don't realize how much medis medicine is actually in their kitchen, in their refrigerator, in their grocery store. So, um, you know, just as an example, so I was traveling through Iceland, and I caught some kind of cough, and it was a dry cough. Um, so it was a lot of vata, which is not too surprising because I was traveling, which is a very vata-provoking type activity because you're always moving like the wind. And then Iceland is a very windy and cold place, a dry, windy, cold place. So, you know, my vata just went through the roof. Um, so anyway, I got this dry cough, and I'm traveling, so it's not like I have you know, I always travel with some kind of medicines, but I didn't have a lot. And then, you know, I'm traveling, you know, in a country where, you know, I don't speak the language. So, um, you know, I was like, well, how can I help myself, <laughs> you know, given these circumstances, you know, I'm out of my uh, zone, you know, comfort zone. I can't just like, you know, it wasn't the kind of situation where I could just run to the store and grab what I need because I know everything is. Um so what I did for my dry cough is I did find run into somebody, a very kind Icelander, who um, um, gave me some angelica tea, which is a warming herb tea. It's also very good for uh, balancing vata. But what I added to that was I didn't just do that by itself, but what I did was I usually I could get hot water wherever I went, like either a bar or restaurant or something. Like that. So I would go ask for hot water, and then I would put my angelica roots, you know, in there. And then what I would add to that concoction is I would add black pepper, I would add honey, and I would add milk. So the thing is black pepper, um, since I was drinking this concoction, you know, two to three times a day, I didn't want to drink, you know, like Angelica with black pepper um, without the honey and the milk, because the honey can be like, it's, um, it's a warming, uh, what is a warming kind of sweetener, um, but it doesn't form congestion, but it's soothing. Yeah. So that's what I wanted for my lungs. I didn't want something that was too off or provoking because sometimes it can, it, it, things can flip uh, pretty quickly. So that's why I added the honey. And honey is also good for um, balancing uh, pitta as well as vata because it was uh, inflammation and dryness. And then the reason why I added the milk, and specifically it was cow's milk, is that cow's milk does create mucus. And so that's what I wanted because I had a dry cough. And I'm, you know, breathing all this cold, dry air, you know, in Iceland. So that's why I made this concoction of the angelica root with black pepper, um, honey, and milk. Um, and that worked, I think, pretty well. So anyway... <laughs> And that's what's nice too is that black pepper you can find almost anywhere in the world. You know, on the you know they usually have it on the whatever tables at restaurants or whatever. You don't even have to ask for it. You can you know, put some you know in your hot water. You know, if you've got some congestion, or you can put some extra on your food. You know, that's kind of so it's kind of nice that way, right? Anyway, um, so as far as the cardiovascular system is concerned, um, black pepper because it's warming does improve circulation, and because of that can help improve like cold extremities, hands and feet. Uh, in the gastrointestinal system, uh, black pepper can help with indigestion and uh, potentially hepatitis. Now, again, black pepper is not going to cure hepatitis, but the thing is that, you know, there's uh, usually some congestion there, sometimes some heat as well. And that may seem like a contradictory thing, but actually you can use black pepper for fevers. And the reason why that may work, I'm guessing, I don't know for sure, is that sometimes when you have a warming herb and, and the, it increases circulation, when you bring um, blood to the surface of the body through increasing circulation, that blood can cool down. 
and release some of the heat through the skin. So that may be why black pepper can be used for fevers. Now again, you know, if somebody has a raging fever, I wouldn't just use black pepper. Um, but, you know, in, uh, with mild fevers, you know, maybe some black pepper tea or some extra black pepper in food or, you know, that sort of thing might be helpful. Um, so skin uh, rashes. And uh, the reason why potentially is that, again, uh, even though rashes for the most part are typically, it depends on the king of rash, but a rash is usually involves some kind of inflammation, so there's heat. But again, if you're relieving increasing flow to the area uh, through black pepper, that can help wash out kind of some of the toxicity that's there. If it's kind of a hot, wet rash, like a poison ivy type thing, um, you know, there's like little vesicles that form a fluid, so it's wet, it's hot and wet. So this dryness of black pepper can help dry that out. Um, and if it's a um, hot and dry rash like eczema, um, then that the warming properties of black pepper can again uh, help with the coldness of the eczema. But again, I wouldn't overdo the black pepper because if you do, you can create too much uh, dryness. And that might, you know, again, with too much black pepper it might make the eczema worse. Yeah. So also musculoskeletal uh, system arthritis, because again, it's going to help with uh, circulation. And again, depends on the kind of arthritis. Sometimes you get arthritis that's a vata type of arthritis where there's like um, dryness and degeneration of tissue. Uh, a lot of times like um, uh, as people get older, that kind of thing. Um, sometimes from injuries because the tissue is damaged. Um, but there's also other kind of arthritis uh, symptoms, which is more like a pitta kapha type of arthritis, where there's heat s sometimes, but also swelling. So especially where there's like a swelling type of arthritis, uh, the black pepper, I think, can be helpful because, again, that dryness, it'll bring a gentle warmth. It'll increase, uh, you know, to balance the coldness, or at least it will help to uh, increase circulation, so get good blood flow, you know, fresh, oxygenated, nutritious blood, and sweep out any inf inflammation. Um, but also the dryness will help with uh, the wet um, wetness of the uh, edema or the swelling, yeah. As far as the immune system, uh, black pepper can be potentially helpful with worms uh, because of this kind of um, uh, bitter property as well as the heat. Um, but I wouldn't use black pepper by itself for worms. I would probably use some other herbs as well. Um, for female issues, um, painful or absent menses can be potentially helpful because, again, the gentle uh, heat uh, from the inside of the body from the black pepper can reduce things like uh, cramping. Um, and also, if there's an absent menses, usually absent menses means that the body's too cold, either too much vata or too much kapha. So again, just a little gentle heat can potentially bring that back. But again, you know, when we're talking about female menstrual issues, I'm not sure that black pepper on its own would um, help absent menses. Like, you'd probably have to um, really look at somebody's whole lifestyle to see if they're too vata, which typically they are when I've analyzed, um, you know, women who have absent menses or, or long menses, you know, if they have like a 35, 40 day cycle period, that can indicate kapha. Yeah. It may be painful, like, you know, again, if you're in the middle of almost nowhere, and at least you've got some black pepper, you know, available to you, uh, and, uh, you could put some of that on your food, or if you have some hot water too, make a little tea. Um, so if you have like cramps or, you know, swelling, bloating, that sort of thing, uh, the black pepper may be helpful. Uh, as far as nutrition, black pepper tends to be high in copper. Uh, so if you're looking for that, that's a way to get a little bit more. Um, and then in general, so general effects of black pepper. So um, again, from an Ayurvedic perspective, that the black pepper bounds us the third chakra. So the third kind of energy wheel, if you're familiar with the seven chakra system. Um, and the third chakra is related to, uh, it's a fiery type of chakra and it's related to self-confidence and power. So there is this kind of like sun energy associated with black pepper. Black pepper is also detoxifying. And that's again, partly because it's pungent. So it's going to help like, um, and that's why you don't want to do too much either because it can like strip away tissues if you overdo it or do it for too long. Um, but it can have a little bit of a helpful scraping 
um, effects. You know, if you do a little bit of black pepper daily or every other day, that sort of thing. Um, it does also help to, it's a warming herb, so it does help to um, increase metabolism a bit. Again, I don't think this is going to be a magic bullet if you're really trying to lose like a lot of weight or something like that. But, um, you know, generally, generally getting a little bit warmer um, and using warming herbs can be helpful. Again, you just don't want to overdo it because if you overdo hot herbs uh, to try to lose weight, then you can get inflammation. You can get dryness and you can get like um, degeneration of tissues because things are too hot. So you got to keep things in balance. Fever, as I mentioned, uh, again, maybe because it brings blood to the surface and you can cool off the blood that way. It does also help to digest um, certain foods like cheese, rice, avocado, and potato. So some carbs and also some kind of fatty foods can be helped with black pepper. Uh, there is also green pepper uh, out there, which is less heating. So uh, that's out there. And then white pepper has less essential oils because the outer skin has been removed. So green pepper and white pepper may not be quite as uh, effective as black pepper. Um, and then the other thing is that black pepper has very similar effects to cayenne pepper, but it's not as hot. Cayenne pepper is a very uh, hot herb, um, especially if you have a lot of pitta or fire either constitutionally or in the moment. Um, cayenne pepper is a big no-no there. Um, I don't tend to use cayenne pepper much. Um, if I ever give somebody cayenne pepper, it's usually just like pinch or pinch or two a day for like three, three to five days. That's about it because it's so hot. And again, that's in just certain circumstances. I don't use, again, cayenne pepper too much because it's uh, way too much for the most part. Um, so again, the caution here is that, you know, whereas most herbs, you know, you would use about a teaspoon, full teaspoon per cup making tea with black pepper because it's um, warm, but also, you know, again, drying, you don't want to overdo it. Um, I would only use an eighth of a teaspoon per cup uh, because it can cause acidity and dryness if you overdo it. Okie dokie. So um, as always, uh, thanks for your time. I appreciate you stopping by and listening to my talks. Again, this presentation is based on my book, Drink, your, Drink to Your Health, Medicinal Teas, Juices, and Milks from Around the World. You can always pick up a copy on Amazon if you want. And um, I do have another YouTube channel on Vedic astrology or ancient, ancient Indian astrology. It's called Heart Light Vedic Astrology, that channel. And then um, almost all the, photo, all the photographs in this talk and a lot of, most of the photographs I include in my videos are my own. And I do have an online photography gallery and gift shop if that's if you're ever looking for unique uh, gifts for somebody, yourself or somebody else, and you have the website there. All right, so as always, I hope you found uh, the information here uh, helpful, useful, and interesting to you um, in um, just feeling better and being healthier. All right, you take care. Namaste.